out of this live window, guys? No, you're fine. Is it going to double podcast? No, this is what we're using. Okay. Hey, everybody. So excited to have you. Thank you for your patience. We are live with Jen and Jeff from Tonic. Such a good day to have a great conversation about websites, about launching your websites, about launching with style, launching with confidence. And these two guys are the best in the biz and they have decided to bring their expertise, review a few websites and give you some insight about how to do that with your very own website. So excited to have you. Uh, this is the only webinar that I know of that is coronavirus free. Um, so we're, we're glad that you're here. This is 100% sanitary. Um, and so it's, uh, it's going to be an awesome day. It's going to be an awesome time. Um, we've got about an hour to go over a website with these guys. Um, and just want to know, we just want you to know that we are also doing a giveaway. So two lucky people, one person is going to get one year free of a show at membership. So that's access to the top tier of our uh, pricing point. So you get integration with WordPress, you get plugins, uh, and obviously you get the amazing show at platform to be able to build the website of your dreams. And uh, another gift that we are giving away, Tonic has so graciously given away $250 coupon to their Tonic site shop. And so that is going to be happening at the very end. If you want those giveaways, so here's, here's a few things I'm going to ask of you. I'm going to ask that you stay all the way to the end because we are announcing that at the very end of the webinar. And then I want to see a lot of interaction on the chat. I want to, I want to see you guys interacting with us, asking questions, uh, raising a, uh, a hand whenever you feel like a good point has been given. Some amens are always welcome up in this church this morning. So, uh, yeah, we're <laughs> looking for that. And uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fantastic. Uh, Jen and Jeff are two web designers that are just fantastic. Uh, Jen and Jeff all said, long time custom brand website design designers, the creative team behind the Tonic Shite Shop, which is a collection <coughs> of cocktail inspired, completely customizable websites for modern, stylish, and creative entrepreneurs. They're design soulmates, best friends who run businesses, a business from the opposite side of the country, Virginia and Seattle, respectively share a love and hospitality, industrial design, good branding, witty banner, and of course, a great con cocktail. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm going <laughs> to get out of it. the way and I'm going to uh, let Jen and Jeff do their magic. Jen and Jeff, so thankful to have you on the webinar this morning. Thank you guys for being here. Well, thank you, Chris. We appreciate you guys figuring out all the tech stuff that we just smile and nod to. <laughs> so thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. Um, just want to check with everyone that you can hear both Jen and I. Um, okay. And um, yeah, like maybe. I don't know. I mean, yeah. if you want to just stare at Chris the whole time, that's fine, too. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, perfect. Thanks. Thanks again for hanging with us. Everyone, um, as uh, we are a bi coastal web design team. Um, so I'm in the Seattle area and Jen is in the DC area. And so we're kind of used to this virtual life. Um, so we're glad to <laughs> hang out with you guys. Um, as weird as it feels to be talking to a little green dot at the top of our screens. Yeah. <laughs> um, um. So like Jeff said, we've, you know, we started out kind of doing custom design and we have been using show it since like show it began. Basically we stumbled onto show it as designers who didn't code. This was kind of like this magical mm -hmm. place where all of a sudden you could still design and you didn't have to know HTML and CSS. And so we were like real early adopters way back in the show it desktop days. I think 
seven or eight years ago, not maybe 10 years ago for you, Jeff. I don't even know, forever ago, basically. Yeah, you found show. so long ago. <laughs> yeah. And we stumbled into show it and we quickly realized that there was something really special about not only the show at the brand, but also show at the platform. And as you guys know, the most of you who you show it, since I saw all of these sites that are using show it that you guys have, um, it just allows you to bring your vision to life, unlike any other website platform out there. And that's cool enough on its own. But I think the thing that we were really impacted by is the show it team and their platform. They actually care about you as a person. They want your business to succeed and they're here to make that happen. And so if you've interacted did was show its support if you've interacted with their staff we kind of joke internally that like squarespace doesn't care about you and, and show it does um but but that's really true and i think that they're just advocating for you and for your businesses and to make sure your website says exactly who you are at your best and then you know jeff and i obviously can help a little bit with the design part of things so we're excited mm -hmm. to get in here today answer any questions that you have. So if you have just like general branding questions, that's kind of like what we live and breathe every day. We would love to talk through site design problems or best case scenarios and, and just give advice as much as we can because we want this just to be a great resource for you. And then we're also going to do two site reviews. Um, it was so hard. Man, we just went through hundreds and hundreds of sites that were submitted. And we kind of wish we could just go through and do all of this. So if you have 12 hours, for, to hang out with us today, then we'll, we'll do that um, and just do like a marathon. Um, yeah. But we did we did just kind of randomly choose two that we had some that we have some thoughts on. But if you want us to look at your site, put it in the link, put it in put it in the chat, and maybe we can do a little kind of lightning round at the end and see if we can give some just really quick advice for the people that are tuned in here today. So we'd love to love to do that. Um, yeah. So how how did <laughs> I? typically <laughs> love to do any sort of webinar or anytime we're, we're teaching a class or anything. We just love for it to feel very like workshop style and, um, and somewhat casual in the sense of like, if you guys have questions, like we'll try to track a little bit um, with that. I'm not the best at uh, multitasking, but I will try my best for you guys. <laughs> um, and yeah, just feel free to, to jump in. And, and ultimately, you know, as we're looking through these sites, you know, we hope that some of the larger, bigger picture stuff that we cover will just be something that you can take and apply to your own. So, and even some of the smaller strategies in terms of refinement and, um, you know, perfecting things can also be applied to your site. Um, so I just encourage you guys to kind of think, um, you know, that pay attention to how you might be able to apply these things to your own site and into your own brand. Um, and we're just using these as examples. But what's interesting as we look through everything, there was there's commonalities and there's sort of common mistakes that we see made. Um, and then we also see a lot of things that are working really well. So we'll try to highlight those um, as we go through these. Um, and we'll we also have like a time at the end for questions kind of carved out. So if you have those, you can put them in the chat. Um, and our amazing brand manager, Christina, is going to be collecting those for us. Um, and so we can we can jump to those um, at the end as well. So feel free to put those in and hopefully Christina can catch them. Um, okay, so we're gonna do a little screen share moment and see how this works. Uh, this is untested, so we're just gonna go. Slightly, we're gonna do slightly this untested. Um, while Jeff is figuring this out, I just want to mention that some people are asking like how our, our webinar cameras look so good. And it's because Skype now has this like very fancy background blur. So on, I kind of was asking for that and that was a no from Skype, but um, that's what's going on. So if you use Skype for this, then apparently you can blur your background and it does it automatically. So very cool. Um. You know, on the trend of tech dif difficulties, because we just like to keep things real consistent here. Um, Chris, it's going to have me quit Skype in order to do that because of, you know, security and privacy on my computer. Um, can I just rejoin the call and will that put me back into the feed? Okay, so we're going to go with that. I'll be back in a second. Jen is going to do a magic show while, while I'm gone. <laughs> I'm a really good juggler. Um, so get, get excited guys. Get excited. <laughs> 
Um, no, I would love to, I would love to answer any questions. So which one of your templates would you recommend for a photographer? Um, 21 of them. So we, yeah, just kidding. Um, no, we, we do have most of our templates are really oriented toward photographers. So if you have a particular style that you have in mind, um, we just, our, our newest templates like Martini that we just launched is a great website for a photographer because it just has really large scale images, a great brand statement portfolio right on the homepage. That's one of my favorite new ones. Oh, Jeff, are you back? Can I Guess stop who's juggling back? Now? Guess who's back? Yeah, I am back, but you can keep talking because I have a couple anyway. things to rearrange. Okay, just checking. So okay. as I was saying, Martini, so if you go to tonicsightshop.com slash martini, um, that's one of my favorite sites to recommend for photographers because it just follows a lot of the rules that we're going to talk about today. Um, when you immediately land on on it, I think it's just has a really high impact because it has large images and it has like a really big brand statement that immediately says who you are, what you do, who you do it for. There's social proof integrated throughout the site. We're going to talk about that today. Um, and it really just has a strong statement just as you browse the homepage, people are able to get an idea of your work. And I think that's something that we're going to talk about a little bit today. But if you think about your website, your homepage is your greatest asset. Your homepage is like your billboard. And that's the page that needs to instantly capture someone. We usually say within 0.08 seconds, like that's how quickly it needs to draw them in. So what they see immediately when they land on your website needs to be captivating. It needs to immediately attract your ideal client. And as they scroll, you might imagine as you've done before, and I've done before, so often you'll go, to, you'll go to a website, you'll see the homepage, you never click on anything, and then you jump off, right? And you bounce, as, as, as they say it in website world, you bounce. And so <laughs> you want to have, yeah, I'm not going up to do that. I'm not going to do it again, I promise. Um, <laughs> but as you're scrolling, especially on mobile, you're giving them the most um, optimized overview of your brand and your work. And so if they never go anywhere else on your website, you want that homepage to really give them an idea, not only of who you are, but of your work and your style. So if you only have like one big image on your homepage and then a photo of you, I think you're missing out because if you're able to thread more imagery, more of your product, more of your services, just from that homepage, you're able to kind of create this miniature brochure that people are able to um, get an idea of your brand and your work in a much better idea. So that's just a general recommendation. And that's something that we've kind of kept in mind as we've built our, our website increasingly because a few years ago that wasn't a thing you know it was like whatever you saw right here and that initial rectangle was all that there was and now because of scrolling and because of how intuitive that's come with instagram and all the other applications that we're, we're browsing that's the best way to create a really interactive experience and you're able to give people a lot of content without it feeling that way because they're just digesting it in bite-sized amounts so if you look at, for example, the new website we just launched for Jenna Kutcher at jennacutcher.com, um, you're able to see there's so much content on the about page. But after you get to the bottom of the about page, you really have an idea of who Jenna is, what she does, what's most important to her. You've seen a lot of photos of her. You've seen freebies. You've gotten an idea of what she offers. And I think it's really effective, even if they never went anywhere else on that page of understanding what she does and, and connecting with her. So that's just a good general advice. Jeff, did you, did it yeah. work? <laughs> okay. I think so. Okay. Um, just pull on your ear when I should stop talking. <laughs> okay, so I just did the screen share. Um, is that coming through on the feed, Jeff? I mean, Jeff, that's my name. <laughs> there it is Chris I saw I saw like Jeff Williams name right to the side of the screen um, okay cool so then we are gonna um, th thumb through this a bit um, and we're gonna just walk through some of the things on a couple of sites um, that were submitted and hopefully this will be um, helpful for all of you so we are looking at here at Celebration Stylist, um, and we immediately wanted 
a like circus themed uh, dessert bar as a result of pulling up to this site. <laughs> and um, we, I think what's so cool about out of the gate of this site is that it's just like super colorful. Um, it's simple, it's easy to navigate um, and it just kind of shows um, what celebration does. Um, kind of out the gate and, and shows it well. Um, we do have a couple of things that we'll kind of walk through um, on this. The first being that um, one of the things that Jen pointed out when we first came to it, and I think it's I think it's because it's such a simple site um, and there, there needs to be a sense of like kind of place when you land. Um, and so, so I think we're not really seeing the menu um, until like the bottom. And so it might just be nice to flip that and put it up at the top. Um, I think I think sometimes that sort of splash page effect can really help um, create a sense of mystery. But um, I also think that it can also kind of lose you a little bit. Um, and, and, and to that point, there's a general sense of that I experienced on this particular site um, where I felt a little lost. Um, and I think some of that was just happening in the navigation because we're working with like a one page design, but then there's also some secondary pages. It sort of was jumping me around. So you'll kind of see here um, that when I click on the about page, it's kind of scrolling me down. But then when I click to services, it's a different page. Um, so I yeah. would just recommend potentially cleaning up that flow a little bit um, and and potentially um, thinking through, does every do, does the services really need to be on another page? Am I gonna do a one page or am I doing a multi-page site? Um, because if you try to combine them both, you have to just be really thoughtful about about how to do that. Um, and Jen, do you have any, any thoughts there on how to, to structure it so that it's not so confusing as to like where you are? Yeah, so I, I always say that like if you have your user wondering what do I do next or where am I at any point <laughs> in your website, you've you've lost them. You know, and that and that's the thing. You never want them to have this feeling of like, uh oh, how did I get here? How did I get back? What do I do next? I'm at the bottom of this page. I guess I should just pick a new situation. You want them to feel kind of like your hand holding them through your website and you're directing them of what to where to go and that it's all very clear. So for example, at the top of the home page, when you land and you can't see the full menu when you land, I had this sense of like, oh, okay, do I scroll? What do I do? So if you want to do something like this, it's as simple as just adding like a scroll to continue or like Jeff said, putting the menu up top so people immediately have those options. But I think it's really important if you do have like a big splash image that you give people an idea that they are supposed to scroll down um, because if you don't, if there's not an evidence of that, sometimes, sometimes that can be really tricky. Um, and then, yeah, so as Jeff mentioned, I think it's disorienting when some aspects go to different pages, some of them stay on the same page. So what I would suggest on this site is that she go ahead and put this about page content on an about page and have a separate page that's gonna be better for her SEO anyway for there to be a separate about page. So what you can do is you can do a little excerpt of, of that about page, just that top part um, that you see right there and then just say, learn a little bit more about me and then that would go to a full about page with more content. Um, I think that's why it's what I think is really effective on this on this home page is that you're able to see like the different sections and say, you know, that there's meet con, there's portfolio, there's services, there's con contact, you immediately have options. And then the other thing that Jeff scrolled past that I think is really effective, look how many Toronto parents, five top kids venues that aren't Chuck E. Cheese. Like that's just like a super sexy, fun opt-in. And that also tells us that she knows her audience well. She knows that her audience is gonna be interested in that and that that's gonna be super clean, a click on that. The only thing that I would suggest there, if you have an opt-in, don't put sign me up on the button because sign me up entails get on my email list, right? It doesn't say, give me that download or download now or um, yes, please, or something like that, that's a much easier ask than give me your email address. So anytime that you can say like, yes, please download now, get my download, 
that's going to be a much more effective call to action for any sort of opt-in. Um, the other thing that I wanted to address about this homepage is that if you're scrolling, we talk about this a lot in design, you want all of the main content on your site to pass what we call the scan test. It's, it's also, Donald Miller kind of calls it the grunt test where it needs to be simple and clear. And then if you're barely reading, because as we know, people don't read, people need to be able to have a sense of what's most important. And the way you tell them what's most important is by scale. So if you scroll up to this review section, what I see is kind words from our amazing clients, right? That's the most important thing that we're seeing in that section. But really, you need to be seeing what's most important here in this section, which was the guests were super impressed with your setup. We had the cake this morning and it was delicious. That's what should be large in this section. And then kind words from our amazing clients could be really small because that's just telling you what the section is. So anytime you have text that's really important, make sure you're highlighting what you actually want people to read because this right here doesn't pass the scan test. What they would take away from the section is just kind words. Um, and if they're, if they're not super interested, they're never going to read this paragraph. So I think and, that's just a good scale issue to keep in mind. And, you know, that was to that point. Um, one of the things that we noticed, too, is that the, the font book is actually pretty limited and it's it's basically like this one font and then the script and so even introducing like a different weight of this font like a bold would be great for a pull quote um or even just using like a sans serif font to bring just a little bit of classic like an italic would work really well with this so basically what's happening is that everything is given the same scale the same weight and the same font and so it all kind of blends in so when i came to this kind word section that was also working against me as well. Um, and so I I quite literally just scrolled past it. Um, and and it, even in in this section too, um, here's like a call call to action that's at the same scale as the contact information. Um, and so this could be larger. I think behind it having that button look is great. But again, there could have been some scale differences and some type differences that are really going to help um, drive the the viewer's eye where you want it. Um, and another kind yeah. of simple uh, another simple thing on this kind word section is that um, even just by removing like next and last and just having arrows and maybe you have it like on a five to six second auto scroll just so people see that it moves is going to be less visually confusing or busy and then that's just going to pull people right i mean you want them to see right from the beginning our party planning process blah, blah 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 like easy to work with we would happily work with them again like that's what you want people to see and like jen was saying what you really see is the script font yeah i have just one more thing jeff on this page if you can scroll down um to that next section so yeah. this um, little call to action section is so great. And I think if you don't have one of these at the bottom of your website on each page, it's so wise to integrate something like this into your footer because request a quote and book a complimentary consultation. Both of those things are great um, calls to action for her clientele. I would also suggest that in the upper right hand corner of her site, she adds a button to book a complimentary consultation. That could be in the menu that's sticky up at the top so people always have that, op that option because the, the great thing about that is that it's such a low barrier to entry, right? It's not saying book now for your party. It's saying book a complimentary consultation. And that that is such an easy way for people to take a first step to hire you instead of just saying hire me now. So I would totally suggest making that call to action visible throughout the site on the top menu so that you can take advantage of that great CTA. The other thing I wanted to mention is at the very bottom of the site, um, I love to see a brand statement at the very bottom of a website that says a little bit more about you, what you do, your location, and then any other important things that you want someone to do. So there, on this side, there isn't really a footer footer there's the the instagram section and that's fine as a cta but i do think you can make even that cta more exciting if you add some text to it so instead of just follow along at celebration stylists it could be like follow along at celebration stylists for our, our best venues our favorite work cake inspiration party planning tips and more what are you more likely to 
to follow that or just follow along at Celebration Stylist. So I think it's really wise to incorporate your, more in your footer because if you think about the fact that almost everyone's going to scroll down to the very bottom of the page, you want the, them to land at the very best part and begin at the very best part because that's their final impression and their first impression. So if you don't have your footer tr tricked out, go look at some of our tonic templates because we really try to make those extra sexy and that's like a fun challenge with all of our design um, in our custom work and in our templates, but it's wise to really trick that section out. And then just a little thing that we noticed here is that it looks like there's just some um, template um, from like the template that she used, some of the images from the demo. And so that's just kind of like a sneaky thing to consider with um, with Show It in particular is make sure that you're adjusting your screen because she's probably only looking at it here. And if you make it wide kind of move your browser around, that's going to help you pick up these sort of missing things. So she's not seeing that, but we are um, just because of how I have it set up. Um, so just something to pay attention to. And I think I see this often. Um, so I don't think that um, she's alone in that. So, and just another quick thing, this is like potentially a very personal vendetta I have against transparent things. <laughs> but in this particular instance, I think that this sort of slightly um, transparent layer is actually doing this part of disservice. This is like one of the most important parts of the site. This is the like what you want them to do. And because of that, it's like blending into the background. Um, and I, I'm actually not seeing the most important thing. So um, that's just something to be careful with. Sometimes people, I think photographers have um, Photographers are just visual artists. I think in general, anyone who's like visually driven, which is a lot of the people we work with, have this thing like, I don't want to cover up my image. I just want like a little bit of it to be sh shown through. And what Jen and I love to do with images, because we do work with a lot of photographers um, and with a lot of visual content is keep in mind that they don't always need to be, um, they don't always need to be perfectly represented as a photograph. They can be used more graphically. They can be used to set a mood or a vibe. They can um, be used to communicate uh, a, a feeling or an emotion. And they don't need to be like seen in their entirety all the time. So I think that's just something to like let, like loosen the grip on as a photographer is that use your images as a design um, component and not only as a representation of your work. Um, use your portfolio when you wanna see like your uninterrupted work, that's great. But there's a, I mean, this would look so cool still, even if you couldn't see a little bit of the waffle going in the background. Um, so just a little photo placement tip to consider as well. Um, a couple of other things that we, we reviewed was when you do get to the services page, um, I think that what I want is to be able to kind of scroll down and see all of the services that she offers. And what's happening is that you're, you're, you're kind of having to click up and down. And for a small set of offerings, I think it would work a lot better for all of these to sort of be open and kind of grid down the page um, so that you could kind of see the range of her offerings um, and then you could get more info on the one that made the most sense for you. Um, since they're all kind of related, and I think that the, the person, um, the messaging is very similar, it's a matter of just deciding where they need, need her, um, I think it would just make a lot more sense to have it open. Um, and then I also would love there to be like a button that like shows the gallery. So when you go to the portfolio, you could see, like you could, this could be linked from that as being a, a dessert bar or like this, the cool like letter table. And so she can use the portfolio to actually, and so I think that sometimes we just put portfolio there as like, I'm supposed to have a portfolio, but really what you're trying to do is sell the service that you offer. And so if you're not linking the two together um, and driving people to the right, like, to what they want, then you're kind of missing an opportunity to sell them on something and show them like, look, I can do this. And this is how it looks, this is what it looks like. Yeah, I wanted to answer a quick question that just popped up yeah. in the chat about your portfolio um, and adding text. So 
if your if your homepage is kind of the brochure for your brand, then your portfolio is your sales page. And so your portfolio is the site is the page of your site that everyone who wants to work with you is going to visit. So I think often this can be a really underutilized portion of your website because you just put your work on there and then you kind of just let it sell itself. And instead, I think it's so wise to use that portfolio section to talk about your approach, to talk about what people can expect from working from you, and then to showcase your work very well, obviously. So I'm putting one example in the chat um, of a custom site that we did recently. But this one, you start with like a beautiful image of her website. Um, Jeff, this is uh, KT's portfolio. Um, Mm. And I think that it, at the very beginning of the website, at the beginning of this, you have an idea of her approach. Then one of my favorite things that I suggest now is in this kind of Instagram culture that we have that wants bite-sized pieces of content, I don't think it's always wise to make people's first land on your portfolio having to choose which portfolio to browse um, because you're saying, okay, like pick one of these events to look at. And instead, I think it's really wise to just give them something beautiful to look at and then allow them to make a decision. So here on KT's website, we have these galleries that are immediately viewable so that you get an idea of her work instantly. And then when you scroll down, you can select more images from a specific gallery. So for example, on the site we're looking at right now, when you immediately, when you click on the portfolio section, you have to choose between Amira's first birthday, Jack's baptism, Casey's bridal shower. And I think that at that point, I don't know enough to know which one I want to look at. I just want to look at one so maybe she could have like a work overview or have one of the galleries open already and you could click to view the next one but if you're just immediately giving your user a choice i think it's wise to give them something else first so um so yeah so i think we're if you have any questions about this website we're happy to to answer anymore but if not i think we're going to move on to the next one if that's all right (laughs) and yes um i i I do believe you guys will be able to rewatch this, correct, Chris? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it will be um, on Show It's YouTube channel, I believe. Um, and so you can you can catch it there if you keep getting interrupted, Laura Lee. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to another site, um, just so we can kind of show you guys another another um, example of of a site that's working really well in a lot of ways and then we'll just kind of walk through some ways that we think that um these guys could improve it so i think this should be up on your own screens now Um, and it's like so beautiful and editorial and just has like this cool luxe vibe um and there's just a lot of things that are really working well for them um in terms of of creating a, a mood and a, and a distinction right away. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, you definitely just get this immediate fine art feel. The image tones work so well, and especially that center image where she's looking directly at you. That's one of my favorite tips for website design is if you want to immediately capture the reader, something with eye contact just goes a, goes a long way into in in terms of doing that. Um, what I do think here though, is that the images are so great and there's there's a lot of white space. I would probably scale these images up even more and have them make even more visual impact where there's like a more magazine feel. Cause even on my smaller laptop, especially the image on the right is such so beautiful, but because it's still relatively small, I don't feel like I really get an accurate like wow moment from this. And the other thing that I'm gonna harp on is um, I think I think when you have scripts, it can be tempting to use them everywhere because it's beautiful and it creates a vibe and a mood. And I think that's so effective, but scripts should be an accent on your site. They shouldn't be where you put any copy that's really important for someone to read. So here where it it says creating beautiful images, the caption magic between couples and love, that's their brand statement. That's their immediate thing that they want people to read. And because it's kind of small and it's not super easy to read, I think people are missing that. So you could have one of those words in script, like capturing the magic or one little piece of a sentence, but don't put a whole sentence or anything super important that you want want someone to be able to read in a script. So I would do that in their nice 
script font, I mean, sorry, in their nice Derek font that they have up in the header, I would have that. And then maybe it would say welcome in the most, in the beautiful script font, um, just as a quick little accent word. And then if you scroll down past that, you'll see that the navigation sections here are in the script and it's again, fairly small. So I think that browse the galleries, you know, coverage and investment, our editing style, all of those things, A, need to be a little bit bigger because they just kind of look decorative rather than like real calls to action. And then B, they need to not be in the script because it's not super legible. Um, my, my other moment that I had right here in the section is you see a lot of these like letters and acronyms at the same time. So this B or I think it's a B, yeah, the B is right there. OSW, RMO, there's just a lot of letters kind of floating around in the section. And I know that like that feels editorial, but first of all, I don't think people, I didn't at least understand what the B was for. So I would probably for sure remove that one. And then the OSW I actually think this is a really cool logo treatment, but maybe you introduce that in the footer. Cause at this point, no one knows that that's your brand name. And so they're just seeing kind of a random monogram without understanding what it is and it's distracting. Um, the last thing on this section is, is again, this, the scan test, right? Like what you see on this page is our MO. You don't see what they're saying below that. And what they're saying below that is the most effective part of this entire website. They basically outline like what the problem is, how the solution can be brought by them. And so we know it can be overwhelming to choose the white photographer. Maybe you've put off contacting photographers, blah, 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 blah. Our priority is creating images you will absolutely love. And then they go on to give proof that they've done that. And this again, like right here where it says the most beautiful photos we've ever seen in the little review section, that is like the, that's social proof gold. And that should be the thing that I remember on this homepage. The photos were the most beautiful things I've ever seen. That should be big in like a larger font so that that's what people remember. And then you're like, whoa, I cannot wait to see this portfolio. And then here, people um, are not ready to get started yet, right? They're not ready to get started at this point in their process. So if you're asking someone to commit to contacting you before they've even seen your portfolio, it's not likely that they're going to follow that call to action yet. So instead here, this should be view the portfolio and give people kind of the first step instead of the last step, um, instead of inviting them to do something they're not ready to do quite yet. Cause you're kind of like, whoa, like this is still the first date. Like, why are you asking to marry me? Like, this is a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think that, I think changing the order of that sequence and kind of plotting someone's path through your website and thinking about like what you want them to I, invite them to do and then what you would want to invite them to do next is so wise. Instead of just making your call to action, contact us, contact us, or book us, or book now the entire time. <laughs> and I'm I'm a, a lover of, of small scale and fine art. Um, and even for me, I'm like, huh, can't see that. Um, and I am notoriously like way too small on things and I have to force myself to find a way to make it feel fine art and spacious while still legible. Um, so that's one of the things I would pay really close attention to on this um, because I think so much of it is just much too small to read. And um, even me who is willing to read small text, I'm like, nope. Um, and, and that's an important consideration. So if you need some examples of some like really great fine art styling, um, we have uh, uh, quite a few that's kind of one of our, our our love languages is fine art design so um looking at um some of the sites in our collection um negroni is super like fine art and um adriatique is another that kind of has that style and you'll see that the text still feels elegant and and refined but is actually legible and 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 quite and even on like isn't it jen uh, jen on adriatique we have like some large text on it, but it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like intrusive. It still feels like very luxe. Yeah, it doesn't draw focus. I think my biggest tip when it comes <laughs> to fine art design is that honestly, fine art design isn't necessarily about making everything sp smaller. It's about putting lots of space around elements. Yes. And that's what's yes. going to give you a more fine art feel. And so I think that's where this, this whole site, I think it could just be scaled up a little bit more. It's not going to lose any of the impact 
Yeah, go to Eat Your Cheek, Jeff, because I think that's even a better example. But yeah, this this is a great example, too, of what Jeff was just showing you, our Negroni design. All of the kind of different sections have space around them. But yeah, so this is, there's lots of sections. It's kind of smaller chunks of content, but you can still read it all, you know? And I think the space is what gives it that feeling of like, ah, oh, like I just want to live in here and, <laughs> and stay right. here forever. It's really peaceful. So, even but you like can a, see like the headlines are still big. Right. And even like a, a sans serif font can, can scale down better. And so like this is much more readable than what we were seeing in um, Oyoko's site because it's, it's sans serif and the serifs aren't kind of b becoming fuzzy when they're small. Um, and then here's that other one we were talking about, um, which is a, which is a serif font, but it's much larger. And so this is probably, I think it's probably like around 14 or 15, whereas typically we like to keep it at like 12 or 13 on the body. Um, so that's just a great example. Um, and then even, oh, this is a funny little joke. We, uh, we use this for a demo. So that's like our funny little uh, thing we need to fix. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so see here, this is also larger, um, but still has like a very luxe fine art feel. Um, so just some things to look at um, as you guys kind of navigate that fine art balance. Um, so that's kind of, those are just like our little walkthroughs. Um, I think I'll go ahead and switch off the screen recording. If I can. Um, yeah, so now we're just kind of going to rifle through some of these questions. I think we'll kind of just free form this. Um, Christina's compiled them for us. Um, so if, if that sounds good to you guys, we'll just kind of hop around and try to answer some of these. There's a lot. Um, which is awesome. We're so happy you guys are so engaged in that we're like, you know, drumming up some questions. Um, we're probably not going to be able to get to um, all of them, but we will um, certainly do our best to, to kind of cycle through these. Um, okay, so let's see. Where should we start? Um, I was just going to say one of the big questions I was seeing in the chat was that were we going to be able to have time to do the lightning round? I think what we may do is we may just plot a time to do a lightning round of some of the other sites that were submitted on our Instagram and do it that way. Um, because I know we're about to run out of time and the, and the webinar will expire here. And I would love to just answer some of the questions. So Jeff and I will take a look at this list and maybe we can do another little lightning round that will just be on our tonic site shop, Instagram, um, whether it's on Instagram live or an IG story or something like that. Um, IGTV, but let's just, um, let's just go. So, do you recommend long or short scrolls, Dana said? And I think I hit on this a little bit, and but I definitely feel like in the age of you know scrolling, as long as you make it dynamic and and engaging, I think a long scroll can be really effective because I think people, the longer people spend on your website, honestly, the more likely they are to book you, and and that's the goal of your website, right? Is to is to have someone fall in love with your brand to the extent where they want to hire you or work with you or buy your product. So if they're spending two minutes on your site versus eight minutes or 10 minutes, they're really doing a deep dive. And that's why I'm such a big believer in like giving them really engaging, beautiful design, beautiful layout and beautiful work to scroll through. So an easy way to add more length to your website is by splitting up some of your content into more digestible sections and then separating those sections with some of your work and your imagery. So maybe it's just as simple as like having less text in a section, but adding some more images that break up the design and do that beautifully. Or maybe you can add some featured blog posts from, from, from your blog and have a beautiful image that goes with each one. Um, I think that can be really effective. But if you look at all the content that you've created on your website, um, another way of adding links to various pages is incorporating more social proof to your website. And just a quick anecdotal story, I think I spent 25 minutes reading reviews on Sephora for a bronzer um, the other night, like literally was just like reading reviews for like an $11 bronzer. And I, I, I was doing that I spend doing that. How much more are people reading their views when they're going to spend, you know, five thousand dollars with you, or or ten thousand dollars, or however it, however much it is? The reviews on your website are absolutely the most important 
bit of content that you can possibly possess. So if you can add more reviews throughout your website, not just on a, on a reviews page and add photos with them, that's the most effective change that you can make to your website right now. Because in our culture, reviews are just gold mines. So um, that's a great way to add more content to any of your pages is adding a review with a beautiful image and people can scroll right past it, but it reinforces your brand values again and again. Um, this this kind of came up a little bit in the chat too about, about fonts and, and how many is too many. Um, I think that, I, I think it's all, it's a little bit of a, you know, it has to be done well. There's a lot of sites that we've done before that have, like even our tonic <laughs> brand has, gosh, what, at some points it's had eight to 10 fonts. Um, and that's probably for the average person, that's like way too many. So I think that um, it, it can be done, you can mix fonts well, um, if you kind of know what that game looks like. Um, but it's a pretty nuanced thing and that requires even sometimes we're like, whoa, calm down with the fonts, guys. Um, so I think somebody had recommended like three. I think somewhere in the like three to five range is good. Um, three is probably a, a really great sweet spot um, for, the, for the kind of average um, user. Um, and if you get into any more than that, you have to just be really careful to, to pair them well and still have consistent rules even if um, there is a, a mixed font book. Um, so you'll see some, some fonts, font books in our designs that are a bit more complex, um, but there's generally still rules of like, we won't, there's like, there's a heading, subheading title or in body on with like one set of fonts and then there's like an alternate, but they're usually not always mixed together. So. Um, just something to keep in mind there. I think overall where where we see people slip up is that they're they're like mixing things that go, don't go well together. Um, so just like I have this funny thing when it comes to like cuisine, like if I'm doing Mexican food, I want all of the things to be like Mexican food. Um, I don't want to be like, let's have caprese when I'm having a burrito. And so that's a little bit of how I approach like design um, and type two is that like you make sure they jive. Um, and if you're going to do like a fusion moment, like make sure that's well thought out because you can fuse, obviously like different cuisines can be fused together, but like it's done in a very intentional, like designed way. Um, so just be careful with that because ultimately I think what it does, it ends up feeling like overwhelming um, and can confuse the message a bit. Um, another question kind of about images um and i think the the question was do you feel images should be all the same tone um and i think that signature images should have a color story and i think your site should have a color story so you even see in kt's site there's a lot of different color variation but there's still a color story um there's a lot of consistency there's a lot of like the the images that we picked on those certain featured areas um have have a tone to them and have a have a color consistency and the portfolio you can range it a bit but i think throughout the site on those signature images um it should go along with your your brand palette and then also your um your your portfolio like the bulk of your work should all kind of be in the same tone what else um one person asked <laughs> so we get this question a lot. I noticed that tonic templates are more expensive than others. I'm sure there's a very good reason for this. Thank you so much for saying it that way. A lot of people are like, why do you think your sites are way more <laughs> expensive? Um, so yeah, there is definitely a huge difference between um, our template pricing and some of the pricing that you might find elsewhere. And I think that's because we really put all of this thought and effort that you're seeing on this webinar into each one of our template designs, not just our custom websites. And so we build our designs to convert and attract your ideal clients um, with every bit of strategy that we use to design sites for Jenna Kutcher and KT Mary and some of these people um, that are investing thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. You're paying like a 20th of what they're of the, what they're investing to get a site of the same caliber that you can then take and really customize and make 
feel totally like you. And so I think we have people just, just tell us over and over, oh my gosh, my website paid itself off within hours, you know, cause I booked the, the dream client I'd been looking for, or all of a sudden their business is just skyrocketed, skyrocketed because finally their brand strategy and their aesthetic really started to match. And so, yeah, we definitely don't apologize for the fact that we're, we're a luxury price, <laughs> but we do feel like we're able to deliver on that because, and we've really seen that happen over and over and over. And just the amount of hours we spent on each design, I think really translates to to the results. So we hope that makes sense. And we definitely want mm -hmm. everything to be affordable, which is why we also made sure that there are some great payment plans on our site. So I hope that answers that question. Um, um, <coughs> so I think I think we're kind of approaching the the end of our time here. Um, so we'll we'll try to find a way to answer some of these questions. Um, so if you guys uh, want to give us a follow. This isn't like a way to get you to follow us, but if you would like, I think the best way for us to answer some of these questions is we could do like a Q and A um, on our Insta stories. So if you want to give us a follow there, um, we we will try to address some of these questions in like a general Q and A that we can post up there. Um, and we'll also, we're, we'll, we love to take feedback and questions um, and weave that into our email content as well and on our blog. So. If we weren't able to get to your question, hopefully we can pull, pull some of this together and present it to you in a different way, um, so that those questions get answered. And we're, you know, we're always happy to help um, with those. Even if you want to shoot us a DM too, if if you didn't, if you had some follow up questions for us, we're always happy to to get to that. Um, so uh, the other thing we did want to mention um, is that we um, let me see my notes here. Um, we do need to we need to do the giveaway, which we're excited about. Um, mm -hmm. And then, what's that? I said, and our discount code too. Yeah. Um, so we we of course have the giveaway, but we also wanted to hook everyone up who's here with us to use the code Stir It Up, um, and Jen can put that in the chat for us, um, and that will get fifteen percent off of anything in our collection. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, that will be good for a little while. So don't feel any sort of rush or anything. We just wanted to like hook you guys up, but no pressure there. Um, and then also, if you want to know, um, if you want to join the conversation right now, we started a series um, basically matching up Enneagram types with the sort of websites that um, should align with that. And so it's all based on like, depending on your clients and the Enneagram type and giving you tips on like what your website should, should include. Um, so that's kind of a fun conversation. Our first post was up, is in our feed right now. Um, and people have some thoughts about it. So, and we have a fun email series that we started to, um, we're going through those. So if you guys want to nerd out with Jen and Christina about that, I am starting to nerd out more. I'm like way, way behind the, the, behind the times with Enneagram and I just took it a couple of weeks ago. I'm a, a controversial one. I, I tested as a three, but um, apparently that can often happen. Uh, really, I'm a one, but I test as a three. So if you guys have thoughts about what I am, let me know. I'm currently having an identity crisis over here. So um, and yeah, so fun stuff going on there. We just want to like carry, carry this conversation forward um, as best we can and connect with you guys. Um, that's why we love show it and we love um, taking part in these sort of things is because um, we love the people who um, who are here. So, um, so Chris, I, should we do the giveaway? Yeah, I think that's a, a great idea. First off, just wanted to say thank you guys so much, uh, uh, Jen and Jeff, for pouring out such great information. We've got such good feedback from the people who've been on the webinar today. And uh, if you don't already know, I, I hope you already do. I'm sure you already do. It's tonicsightshop.com, and you can find them on Instagram as well with Tonic Sight Shop. Uh, so make sure to follow their Instagram stories. Make sure to sign up to their newsletters. It is amazing. I'm on it myself personally, um, <laughs> and you will you will definitely benefit. They've got a podcast too where they talk about a lot of the things that they've talked about here today. So. Uh, plenty of great places to find them and follow them. Hey, I wanted to mention one thing before we do our giveaway. We have another webinar coming up this month, March 24th. 
with Nate from Sticky Albums. Um, he's an awesome guy. He's going to be sharing about all things email list, about how to build an email list, how to nurture them, um, how your company or your business can really benefit from making sure that you are actively working on and promoting a newsletter and an email sign up list. So make sure you mark your calendars. We'll be doing more giveaways uh, and it's going to be great content as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do some giveaways. So there, there were two people that really stood out to me uh, in the chats that I wanted to do the giveaways for. The first one, we will give away a free year of a Show It membership. And that one is going Woo. to Mrs. Lauren Merrill. Lauren, thank you for being on the webinar today. Uh, make sure that you reach out to me. My email is chris at showit.co. Uh, you can also just follow up in the comments uh, and make sure that I have your contact information. Um, I'm sure you don't want to share that publicly. Uh, so just make sure to get in touch with me, chris at showit.co. For our tonic sight shop giveaway, uh, what everybody has been waiting for, the coveted prize of the morning. Drum roll at your desk, on your car, <laughs> steering wheel, wherever you want to. Uh, this <laughs> one is going away to Miss Cheryl Lig. Cheryl Lig, L-Y-G. She's been on the chat and she's been helping out a lot of people and staying uh, engaged as well. So, uh, Jen and Jeff, how do you guys want to facilitate uh, that with, with Cheryl? Do you want her to get in touch with you? I think Cheryl already has one of our websites. So what we would like to do is we would like to offer Cheryl a free Just a Splash session with us, which would be awesome since we'd love to meet her anyway. Um, so that's actually a $350 value instead of $250. So Cheryl, just shoot us an email at info at tonicsightshop.com and we can get our eyes on your site and get to meet you and see if we can help you up level things even more. I'm so glad you've been really happy with your Amaretto Sour though. That makes me so happy. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Jen and Jeff. And uh, also wanted to say thank you all for coming to the webinar. Uh, if you need help with your show at website, feel free, showit.co, reach out for help and support. Our support team is amazing. Love you guys. Appreciate y'all and can't they wait are to see you on the next. That was fantastic. Good.